Hello, good morning and welcome from the Headlands Dunes State Nature Preserve in Mentor, Ohio on the lake. What lake? Lake Erie. Only the ninth largest lake in the world. I'm here today to walk around the beach. We can take a look around. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. So uh, come along, let's see what there is. Many years ago, Ohio set up a system of state ride trails, North Country Trail, the American Discovery Trail, and the Buckeye Trail, which is the only one that's entirely within the state of Ohio. As you can read here in the sign, 1400 mile loop through 49 counties, and it ends right here, the northern terminus of the Buckeye Trail. So we're starting at the end. Let's go check out the dunes. It's a pretty morning. It's chilly. And we're going to come up to the lake here through the dunes on a beautiful, beautiful day. All right, the grasslands, a nice wetlands in here. Probably a lot of ducks. I see some big birds over there, possibly buzzards. The dunes all covered with grasses. I don't know if you read any of the signs, but they all kind of warn you to stay off the uh, dunes and off the grass so that the uh, erosion doesn't take them away. These are important lands for a lot of species of critters, birds and insects and little mammals and all that. A lot of beavers around here too. They're not so little mammals. There's a gull flying by. It's windy out here, so apologies if you can't hear me too well. I'm trying to talk loudly. Coming to the crossroads. Right, at the crossroads, just disturbed a killdeer there. This way just kind of ends. That's back the way we came. This way leads over to that lighthouse in the distance. And this way leads straight onto the beach. Here's a sign explaining what I just mentioned about the dunes. You can go ahead and pause the video there and read that sign if you like. Meanwhile, we'll keep walking. Ah, listen to the waves. Well, up here on the uh, end of the boardwalk at the gazebo, they have these viewfinders. Let's see what we can see far away. Oh yeah, these work really well. Hopefully the camera's capturing it nicely. You can see the waves. Zoom in, you get nothing. There we go. Zoomed in a little. You can see the waves all the way on the horizon. You can 
almost see to Canada. Canada is about 60 miles straight in this direction. Almost see it, but not quite. Let's check out the lighthouse. Ah, now that's beautiful. We're going to walk over there in a second. It's just a little preview of what's to come. Let's head down to the beach. Check out these Great Lakes waves. It's about 40 degrees, so not a lot of people out here today. Reminds me a lot of Long Island Sound near where I grew up. It's kind of amazing to me that this is a lake, not an ocean. You wouldn't know it from the waves. A couple foot waves here. Beautiful. It's fun to walk along and look at the rocks on the shore here. The Ohio coastline is full of tons of really, really well-worn rocks in a variety of interesting shapes. I found this perfectly round one that I really dig. Usually I just try to skip them out on the waves. Doesn't go too far, but it's fun to do. Oh no, looks like somebody lost a shoe. Well, they'll be sad about that. Yep, you'll find rocks, very well-worn bits of brick, very commonly. buildings and other things that have fallen into the water over the years. Obviously trash, bottles, bottle caps, cans, things like that that have floated ashore and won't go away. I usually take a Kroger bag with me and try to pick up at least some of it while I'm here. Do my little bit to keep a beautiful place as pristine as possible. I see a lot of other people doing that too, so people do care. One of the neatest things you find out here a lot is little bits of coal. And if I see any, I'll definitely stop and show you, but some places more than others, but you'll find a lot of coal, and the coal is actually from 
back when Great Lakes ships were steamships and were powered by coal. In the process of burning coal, little tiny pieces would shoot out of the uh, smokestacks, unburnt, or if they were on fire, they would be put out immediately when they hit the water. And they're super light, so they roll on top of sand and other rocks, and whenever there's storms, they get pushed ashore here. Anyway, you'll find that a lot, and it's kind of neat that it's coal from a ship from who knows, 80, 100, 150 years ago, sailing these waters. Sometimes it's just nice to listen to the waves. guys coming in here. Now, here comes a good one. Here's another one, white cap. We're getting to that lighthouse. It still looks far away, but it's getting closer. not a rock. I don't know what it is. A perfectly round thing just sitting here on the beach. There's the sun. Pretty high in the sky already. We're getting closer. Well, as we're coming out to the tip of the peninsula here, you can actually see Fairport Harbor on the other side here. Much calmer than the lake side.
we walk across the peninsula now. It's only about 70 feet wide at this point. Much quieter on this side. I actually wish there was one of those viewfinders over here so you could see the village of Fairport Harbor. I'll zoom in. As you can see, it's a cute little place. Fairport Harbor. Now they have, right here, a very pretty old lighthouse, 1800s. And sitting on this side of the quay, there's another light. the old lighthouse and the beacon in tandem would guide ships down here into the quay, into the uh, harbor. As you go along the harbor, you will see The Perry Point Nuclear Plant, about four miles away. It's a sign of the heavy industry that once covered all of Lake Erie and is now just in a handful of spots, thankfully. Lake Erie was one of the most polluted places in the state in the 1960s, but the EPA reforms in the 1970s and 80s really did an amazing job cleaning it up, even though Cleveland still has a reputation and Lorraine and some of the other places for being industrial. A lot of them have moved beyond to post-industrial economies. And have really done a great job of cleaning up. You can actually eat the fish out of Lake Erie now. You can go in the waters. The cleanup has been astounding. Um, you know, with help from us, nature will clean itself up. Look at these clouds. If I could paint those clouds, I would. I don't know that I'd stick to white. I think clouds would look more fun if they were blue or yellow. But then that's why no one ever asks me. Let's go look at the lighthouse. I've been teasing that for a while, but it's really not very far. There it is. Here we are, Fairport Harbor Lighthouse. This one, newer than the old one I just showed you. I don't remember the exact year, 1906, 1909, something like that. 115 years ago, give or take. It's actually not identical to, but extremely similar to the lighthouse in Lorraine and a couple of others in the area. These were actually built by a government contract the uh, U.S. life-saving force manned the lighthouses and the lifeboats to go out and rescue ships in peril. That later became part of the uh, Coast Guard. But these were manned by government employees. You would actually be hired to live and work in the lighthouse and keep it manned and functional at all times. That was before they automated them. Still. Right now, even on a windy day, imagine what it would be like to live in a lighthouse. It just seems amazing. Of course, in the middle of January when it's five degrees and the entire walkway is covered with a foot of snow and ice and you can't get out because of the ice and you're just trapped there, maybe not so nice.
but still scenic, picturesque, no matter what. Let's see how close we can get. Climbing on the rocks now. It's windy and slippery, so I'll take this easy. Maybe put you down for a minute and see how far I can go. There we go. Look at these marks in the rocks. These are from holes where they would put the dynamite in a quarry to blast these rocks out. How they put them here, I have no idea. Maybe a barge dumped them here. Now this one up here has words, so... Let's see what this says. Dimitri Artemy. Well, Dimitri, it took you hours to carve this, I'm sure, but you're getting your two seconds of YouTube fame. Hope that was worth it. Waves are hitting up here every so often, you can see the wet. I'd rather not get drenched today if I don't have to. But, you know, it comes with the business. As long as I don't get washed overboard. Probably give me a lot of views, you know. YouTuber washed away live in the middle of his vlog. No subscribers though, because there wouldn't be anything else in the channel. But here we are. Fairport Harbor Light. Look at that. Solid metal. Riveted. And up in the dome on the roof is the light. And you can see that wind turbine just spinning, spinning, spinning. It is so windy out here. I'll give you the panoramic again. Made it all the way out. Getting back might be fun. <laughs> Night and day difference on the other side of this breakwater, huh? a different planet. Out here are some more folks who carved their name. I guess that's a thing to do. And uh, a ladder that, well, I wouldn't trust. Not out here. That's for sure. But if you trust it, you can go up there. Private property, obviously. Only if you're authorized. Here's the lighthouse. All the way up at the beginning. This staircase must be for when you take your boat out here, which I'm sure is the official way to get out to the lighthouse, you know, for the lighthouse keepers and maintenance guys and such. One last view out here before I head back over. Well, 
Well, that was a lot of fun. Got a little wet, but nothing that won't dry off. Throwing my uh, shoes and socks over the uh, heater in the hotel. Well, there's an interesting hole in the sand beneath that rock. I bet somebody lives there. I'm certainly not going to go in and find out. Well, whoever lives there has got their home and I'm going to head to mine, at least my home for the night, before I continue off on more exciting adventures to ordinary places. Just look at these clouds though, would you? Amazing, beautiful, beautiful. Here's a little closer view of the uh, lighthouse at Fairport Harbor, at Fairport itself, I mean, the harbor light, the inner light, the old light. Cute little town, like a little storybook village perched on the shores of Erie. I don't know, maybe it's just distance that makes things look more romantic and scenic than they would look up close. I've been through Fairport Harbor before and it is a lovely little town. Mentor and the Lake, also lovely. A lot of tourists up here, especially in the summer when you get to uh, more seasonable weather than what we're having right now. I did run into a few people from all over. Had a nice conversation with a guy from Tennessee, a woman from New York with her two daughters. They were uh, climbing the rocks out to the lighthouse when I left. And a couple of other folks from Ohio and nearby who were rock hounding on the shore, looking for shells and rocks. One guy from Buffalo who told me a story about being trapped out by a lighthouse with six feet of snow and a frigid winter. He said it wasn't a good idea and I have to agree with him. Anyhow, this is uh, a good as any to place to end the vlog and I will uh, do so. Hope you enjoyed the walk and I will see you again next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, have a great day. I mean, I know I'm out here in the middle of nowhere on a sandbar spit, but would it be too much to ask for someone to open up a Dunkin' Donuts out here? I could really, really go for a hot cup of joe right about now. <laughs>